Hello and welcome to the demo video of our bill calendar spreadsheet. The bill calendar spreadsheet consists of three tabs. The first tab you'll find is a README tab where you can switch your currency. You can do this by simply double clicking and replacing the currency sign with any currency sign or abbreviation of your own. And in addition, you will also find some instructions here and a link to our instruction guide. Now the next step you'll find in the spreadsheet is the payments planner. The payments planner is where we're going to add all our information. Because when you add information here, it will automatically update for you into the bill calendar here. Now the bill calendar, especially this section, updates automatically. All you have to do is log your bills in the payments planner and they will start appearing on the bill calendar itself. So let's have a better look and see what it looks like. In total, you can add up to 115 payments each month. We've separated these over four different categories, three times 25 for monthly bills. So for example, if you would like to separate your subscriptions, debt payments, or regular monthly bills, and we've added a section for irregular bills. Now the main difference for the irregular bill section is that when you add a bill here, it does not automatically get added to every single month. The irregular bill section is perfect for those quarterly bills, annual bills, or any other irregular bills that you have that you would like to add manually to specific months. Now, let's add some bills. Let's say, for example, every month you pay rent, electricity, you pay water, and you pay internet bills. You just type in the name, and then next thing you'll do is just enter the due date on which day the bill is due every single month. So let's say, for example, they're due on the first, the first, the fifth, and the seventh. Now all you do is enter the amount, 750, 100, let's say this is 50, and also this is $50. This will now automatically pre-fill in every single month for you. And we know that certain bills might not get taken out monthly or might not have the same exact amount every single month. So in these fields, you can update the amounts and you can update the due dates. So for example, let's say in January, your bill is $850 for rent, and now your bill is due on the second for that month. When you change this here, it will update for that specific month in the calendar. Now let's add a couple more payments and then head over to the payment calendar and see what it actually looks like. So for example, in the second section, we're gonna add all our subscriptions. So we have subscription to Netflix, to Spotify, perhaps also to Amazon Prime. And now we know that these get taken out on the 7th, the 9th, and the 10th of each month. And these are $9, this is $8.99, and this is $4.99. We've also added checkboxes so that you can keep an easy overview. You can just click them once a bill has been paid so you can easily see which bills or subscriptions are still due and you can make sure you never ever miss a bill payment again. Now we're going to also add some irregular bills. So let's say for example we pay uh, annual tuition fees and we pay uh, quarterly property taxes. Now all you have to do is just add it to the amount that you expect the bill to be paid. So for example, we pay annual tuition fees in January and this is $450. After you add the amount, you'll see that the box will automatically color purple. We've done this so you don't forget to add the actual day that the bill is due so that it actually appears on your calendar. So let's say this gets paid on the 19th of January. Now quarterly property taxes, we pay those in February. We pay that in May, we pay those in August, and we pay those in November. Now for every month, we just simply add that it is due on the, let's say on the fifth every quarter. And now when you add this information here, it will only show up on the specific month that you added the amount and the day number. So now that you've added all this information, you will now be able to see a subtotal for every single category and you'll also be able to see a total for every single month on the top. Now this section stays this way that if you scroll down further you'll be easily be able to see which month corresponds to which column. Now that we've added all our information of our bills let's head over to our calendar. So now that we came to the bill calendar you'll automatically see that some of the bills have already been pre-filled into the calendar for you. Now, to select the right month, all you have to do is click on this little drop-down arrow and select the month from the drop-down menu. Now, if we selected, for example, the month of January, the next thing we do is change the year for which we'd like to see the month. 
So for example, this year we're going to look at 2022. Now we can also switch between a Sunday or Monday start of the week. This is completely optional and whatever works best for you. After changing the start day of the week, you can also add up to five paydays. You can change the name of the paydays if you like, simply double click and replace it with any text that works for you. To add a payday, all you have to do is double click on the field and select a payday from the calendar. Now that we are in January, we of course have to go back to January and let's say we get paid on the first Monday of every single week. We simply add our five paydays and now we'll be able to see exactly when we get paid in our calendar. So when you select a month, the due dates in the bottom here will update automatically based on the information that you have added in the payments planner here. So you'll now be able to see all the monthly bills we added, the subscriptions, but also the annual or the irregular bill that we added of annual tuition. They'll automatically rank in chronological order based on their date and then they will also be automatically added to the calendar for you. In the calendar, you'll be able to see the bill name as well as the amount due. Once you pay a bill, you can opt to cross it off as paid here, but you can also opt to cross it off as paid in your payments planner. Now, when you change a month in the bill calendar, so let's say for example, we head over to November now, the bill calendar itself will update automatically. However, you will have to manually adjust your paydays. You will also manually have to adjust if your bills have been paid or not. So let's say, for example, we cross all of these bills off as paid. If we now switch back to January, these paid boxes will stay. So what some people like to do, if you would like to keep an overview of every single month, or if you want to keep a record of every single month, what you can do is duplicate this tab for every single month. This will also be useful for those that want to plan ahead or have a better overview to see what next month will look like. Now, to duplicate a month, all you have to do is click on this little arrow here and click Duplicate. When you do this, a copy is made and this copy will work exactly as the original calendar. So all you have to do here is adjust a month and then you can keep a record of every single month that you have. Now, if you would like to make duplicates for every single month, we would recommend to keep your original as a template to make sure that none of the formulas are accidentally changed. You can also rename these tabs. You just simply double click and select, for example, January. This will allow you to add as many months as you need to plan ahead and to have a better look at what every month will look like. All you have to do is to duplicate, select a month from the drop down menu and basically add your paydays and then on the due date section, cross off which bills have been paid. And that is it. That's basically everything you need to know about the bill calendar spreadsheet. If you have any other questions about this spreadsheet or if this spreadsheet would work for you, be sure to send us a message. I'll leave some contact information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.